Hi, I'm the Gadget Crew, Andy Parr, and you're watching videos by Andy.com. I'm here at CES. Now, you've already met this guy. This is Trent. How do you pronounce your last name? Sigurd. Sigurd. Good. I hate to mispronounce uh, our <laughs> name. Another guy. You've seen him on Facebook. He really hates all the social media and unique. He is Tim Taronis. Tim. Nice to meet you, Andy. Now, we're going to do something different, because you figure by this time, it's what, day three or day four of the show, you've already seen so many segments about one of the hottest products of the show, which is unique, Unique's Typhoon H, brand new hexacopter. Well, what we're going to do is give you the first chance of seeing what the video looks like coming out of the camera. So stay tuned, and that starts next, right here on Videos by Andy. Okay, as promised, we're going to fly the unique Typhoon Ace. Over here now, Tim, now, uh, let's talk for a minute. Tim, let's go on and get her launched here. And what we're going to do, at the same time we're doing this segment, Tim's going to hit record on the CGO 3 Plus on the copter. Now, while we're talking here, and again, there's already been so many segments, I'm going to hate to rehash a lot of, lot of the minutiae details, but we'll go through it. Now, the camera on right here. Let's wave to the camera here. You ready? Okay, we're on the CGO 3 Plus. Plus. Now, I understand that part of the plus is that it can do 360 and go forever, unlike the Inspire. It can go non-stop. So when you're operating the camera, you don't need to worry about centering the camera back to then restart your shot. You can just keep spinning the camera as much as you need to. Okay, a lot of the questions. Now, I've, I've had two Typhoons. I've been very happy with them. Uh, the, some people are complaining about soft edges or issues. Personally, I haven't had the issue. The method I shoot, but for the people who have on the CGO 3 Plus, I've heard other reports here saying, oh, there's been some improvements to the camera. What are the improvements? So, in China, we, our teams are working extremely hard to make sure that the cameras are individually tested, to make sure that the edges are, are sharp uh, and the quality is, is up to par. Um, so, our engineers, they're working on it and we're really excited for the for the Seagull 3 Plus. So is this is it an actual tweak? Or, or basically, we talking? This is the same camera. When you look from the gimbal down, this is the same as the CGO 3. From the gimbal up, it's new. But you're saying in the factory they've done some tweaks to you know just I mean to do the edges that really I haven't seen but others. Have. Yeah, we have a team uh, and they've got these uh, these special trays that hold the camera units and they're checking focus, they're checking the sharp edges to make sure that none of those problems happen anymore. Okay, so now what we're doing right here, we have actual footage coming out here. Tim's doing a great job. Now I know questions have come up before. I guess you can pair them with pretty much any controller of any unique controller. Any unique controller you can use with pretty much any of our products. So if you have a ST10 Plus and ST12, you're going to be able to rebind that controller to the camera so that the controller you get with it, you can use to pilot the aircraft, and you can use your existing controller, maybe for your Q500, to control the camera. Now, so let's say somebody has a Typhoon Q500 or 4K. Can they purchase the new ST16 control and pair that to the Q500? That is something that we're looking uh, to do in the future. So that is definitely a possibility. So that's a maybe. You yes. know, we're a trade show. We're supposed to get yes or no. We don't know yet. Yeah, we don't know yet, but that's definitely some feedback that we're getting from the customers is that people might want to do that. So that's something that we're considering. Okay. But, however, if you get an H and you only have a Q500, you can take your ST10 or ST10 Plus and pair it to that, either use it as the control for the copter or as a second operator? That's 100% correct, Andy. Hey, I like getting things right. <laughs> okay, now we've, we've talked about, you know, I've just done a lot of videos on this. The redundancy here. And again, I know you can't, but I can. I'll talk about competitive brands. I know on DGA's hexacopter solution, only has pop. If one motor goes out, it does a, some sort of dangerous movement to get down, but it gets it down. On yours, I know it's, it's something different. How does that work? Yeah, so I've actually seen this happen uh, on our H920 in testing. Uh, you know, we have to make sure all these features work. So what happens is the opposite motor of the motor that goes out or the prop flies off will do three rotations one way and it will switch and do three rotations the other way. That will uh, counterbalance the loss of lift on the other side. Okay, so 
if it if it does it, it's it's going to bring it down. Is it going to be a hard landing, or is it? You know, you're not going to have too much control on it, are you? Yeah. So you you're going to have uh, pretty pretty good control as it's coming down. Of course, you're not going to have the full uh, flight envelope that you normally have, mm -hmm. uh, but you're going to be able to get that drone back and, and land it safely. Okay. Now I know my Q500. Both of them. I have two different models. I've never had any issues with motors burning out. Now that you're going the hexacopter out versus the quad. Is this first, A, is it a different motor? And is it going to be more stress on these motors that could, you know, make it a good idea that you have a safety measure in there? No, so I mean, that's just, uh, you know, for good measure. Um, with the six rotors, uh, we can use a lower KV motor. So the motors don't actually have to spin as fast. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, no, we're, we're, we're feeling very good about the motors that we're using, and we paired up the perfect prop with it that gives optimal performance in the Typhoon H. Okay. Now, we know that the outer shell is different. We know that the gimbal is different. The camera's the same. The software, is it, is it pretty much a Q500 4K software? So, for the Typhoon, uh, H, we've redesigned the user interface on the ST16, um, and one of the reasons we did that is because we have these smart shot modes, so, and we're calling them tasks. We've got curved cable cam, journey, point of interest, and orbit. Okay, give us one sentence on each one. <laughs> okay, so the curved cable cam is one of my favorites, so if, if, you're, if you don't... On his top ten list! <laughs> So if you, I like to do dual operator stuff, so I get those really dynamic camera movements. Um, and so what you can do is you can set point, you have to fly the Typhoon H to the location you want to set a waypoint. You press set waypoint and you can set, we tested it up to 40 different waypoints in one flight. And the drone will remember the heading, it will remember the camera pitch, and it will execute the, the flight. You can tell it to go faster, you can make it go slower. Um, and my favorite part is you can control the gimbal as it's doing the flight. Okay, so it's basically it's a waypoint. You set it up, you fly the route first. Then when you go back to redo the, the memorized flight, you can sit there and focus on your camera movement. So if I'm shooting a par five golf course, as it moves around, I can focus on the camera. Is that correct? That's 100% correct. Yes. Okay, tell me about journey. So journey mode, uses the tilt of the camera. So essentially, it's, it's, it's a selfie shot. So it'll start looking at you, it will pull out about 120 feet, and then it will fly back in. And the way that the drone knows how to execute that maneuver is based off the pitch of the camera. So if your camera's looking straight ahead, it's gonna go straight back and not gain any altitude. And the more pitch you put on the camera, it will go up at that angle that the camera so is at. So it's like an up and away movement, if you're doing that, but it's just one touch. Correct. One touch, it will go out and it will fly back in. Now, that a, a year ago, at, at CES, 3DR came out with the Solo and they were pitching that, you know, but it didn't seem to work. You think you got it ironed out? I really think we do, and with our 360 degree gimbal, it's going to allow us to do a lot, a lot of things much different than, uh, than the competition. Okay, now I've got to tell you about one of my pet peeves. Again, on my two copters, as viewers know, I've had a lot of success with mine. People have seen the quality of the video. I think a lot of it has to do with processing. You know, when you're shooting, I, I typically shoot at 3840 by 2160, uh, and I process it through Final Cut. I use Apple ProRes 4.2, and I'm getting really good results. However, my pet peeve is this. And when I get on an area like a golf course, around 450 to 500 feet, I start losing video signal. Now, of all the reports I've seen today, we really haven't dis discussed, is there an improvement to the H, or is it pretty much going to be the same as the Q500? There is a significant upgrade on the Typhoon H. We put in a 720 downlink that will go up to 1.2 kilometers away. Okay. Okay, we're, I know we have international viewers, we're in America, 1.2 kilometers, how many feet? Um, that's about, it's about one mile. Okay, yeah. now I gotta tell you, I, I just don't see that, because, uh, but we're gonna put it to a test. Now, uh, I know I got a couple of questions, but speaking of tests, you know, as, as Raymond Robinson will tell you from the series of interviews that I did with him, I don't let anybody get away with an interview on product without asking them two questions. Sure. How much? $17.99. Okay. And let's say $1,800. Because, you know, when I'm typing in the supers, hitting all those 99.99 is too much. $1,800. <laughs> and yes. when? 
And we will be really uh, start shipping in about four months, okay. three to four months. About three, three to four months. Now, dealers are starting to take orders now. Now, I know on the obstacle avoid, there's, there's two types. There's one that's built in for that. That's the sonar. If I'm understanding this correctly, if you come up on a wall, it's going to stop. Yes, with the sonar, if you're in rabbit mode, you come up on a wall, it will stop. And then we've also had... Oh, we mean rabbit or turtle mode? In, in turtle mode, thank okay. you. Okay, yes. I just said you mean job. Okay, yes. hey, I'm throwing a lot at him. Give the guy a break, he's new here. Yes, um, and then we have the Intel RealSense module, and that's really exciting. Uh, and what that is allowing us to do is, it's got two cameras, so it's allowing, it's allowing us to sense depth. Now, this is the first product that has come out from the Intel, I don't say partnership, they gave Unique a, a, a bag full of money. And this is the first thing you're seeing out of there. And I gotta tell you, what a great PR move having Intel make the announcement of this and using a type of nice. Let me tell you, whether you're at the show or watch this on YouTube or Facebook, you've seen a lot of fuss come off of that. But, uh, let me ask you, will Unique dealers or will Unique be selling that real sense module or is that a third party? Yeah, we will be selling a, a package with the RealSense module, and it will be sub two thousand dollars. Okay, now that's two thousand for the module, or two thousand with the copter and everything. That's everything. Okay. So, so and, and and let's go over what's in the box. So you're gonna get a a, a transport backpack. You're gonna get two batteries, an ST16, the camera, and all your chargers. Okay. Now I haven't seen the backpack yet. I, I guess no, that's a battery charger over there. <laughs> On the backpack, I have one question. When I see this folded down, and then I look at the backpack, it seems that the backpack is maybe a couple inches too tall to get on an airplane overhead. Is that correct? I actually uh, took one from China into the U.S. and carried it on just fine. It is... Now, does it make it in the overhead, or are you putting it under your seat? It made it in the overhead. So it fits within airline regulation of carry-on baggage to go in overhead. Yes. Uh, there's some airports where they make you kind of put it in a baggage checker. Well, I've and never owned a suitcase that fits in one of those. Yeah. But, I mean, so you're but saying it will. that the backpack will fit in an overhead. Okay, now we're going through it again. Just one more time. You get the copter, you get the camera, uh, you get the steady grip, you, and you add these new quick release props. We didn't talk about those. Yeah, quick release props. So in the way we've engineered the quick release props, you can't put a left spinning prop on a right spinning motor. So we've made it so that it's foolproof. So especially with a hexacopter, it gets a little more intricate with you know what props go on what motors, and we've labeled them for you, and you can't put the wrong prop on the wrong motor. Okay, and you have the case and the steady grip is included as well. Steady grip on this unit will not be included because of the uh, Zico 3 Plus camera. It's got a 360 degree. Uh, well, that if somebody already has a steady grip, will that gimbal will mount on there? With uh, a specific firmware upgrade. Okay, is that coming? It will be coming. Okay, so and that would fit on the action cam as well because I assume that's using the little three connectors versus the wire. Yeah, we're, we're using the, uh, the, the top plate uh, three pin connector. Um, so your, your steady grip will be able to, uh, to accommodate this camera. But you wouldn't want it in the global mode in which when you spin around the camera stays put because then you're going to have your handle uh, into, into the video. Okay, now while Tim's flying over here, I, I haven't been keeping time of this video. Tim has been flying non-stop. I'm not going to interrupt him on flying because I don't want him to cut the, ca the, uh, the cage and get to us. But you notice we'll get some pretty good battery time about that. Let's talk about the battery. Yeah, so we're using a 5400 milliamp battery and it's a four cell battery. Unlike our Typhoon 4K or P500 4K, which is a three cell battery. So on the Typhoon H, you're gonna get a little more performance and a lot more low end torque. So that helps you with wind and that helps you get up to high speeds very quick. Okay, let's talk about the battery charger. There's a new one. Yes, so we made a battery docking station and uh, it's very easy, you can only go in one way. You shove your battery in there and you got an indication light that says, you know, your battery's charging, your battery's bouncing, and then we have a USB well, port on now, it as well. Now, and let's go back then, uh, before the USB port, you remember what we left off? Yeah. You said it's balancing. Does it have a discharge cycle? At this time, it does not have a discharge. What advice do you have? I mean, we saw what happened with hoverboard. You know, there have been, you know, we know that iPods has some issues. I haven't been hearing about any issues with unique batteries. With, with, when the manufacturers do not include a charger that has a discharge, what is your advice to people who know when they're not going to be flying for a few days, or a week, or a month, or for the winter? What's the best way to store a unique battery? 
So the best way to do that is to discharge your battery to about 30%. You can do that by do, taking it up in flight or just leaving the, the copter on, kind of on the floor. Um, and we recommend being at about 30% battery life to store. And then uh, uh, do you think LiPo bags are the safest method of storing? LiPo bags are absolutely the safest method, safest method of storing. You think uh, that's the next accessory you'll include in the kit? You know, that's that's something that we're looking into as a, as an accessory that, that you can purchase. I tell you, for those who aren't familiar with rifle bags, you can buy them online. They are a, this is a great way. It's like a heavy mesh bag that should an issue a fire or whatever uh, start. And you should be using it while you're charging your battery. While smoke will get out of it, you can save your house from burning down. And I tell you, it's probably one of the safest and best accessories you can get. Like, it's better to be safe than sorry. Now, you think, well, I don't even think we didn't get this landing gear. On this now, it looks kind of thin. Is this designed for breakaway? Uh, well, it's designed to be a very robust system. Though, landing gear are easily replaceable if anything were to happen. Okay, I'm going to scoot in here to Tim. I'm not going to bother. Tim, you have done a wonderful job flying. I'm not going to ask you how long you've been flying for, but can you flip the landing gear for us? Sure, no problem. Okay, and there it goes. Now, I don't know if that's in frame, so what we're going to do is come back and get some B-roll on you. And again, I'm hoping, in a perfect world, we're not only shooting for the GH4, we are shooting for the CCO3 Plus. Anyway, Trent, I want to thank you very much for thank your you, time. Andy. Tim, this is wonderful. For videos by Indy.com, I'm the Gadget Guru Andy Poe, and I'll see you online and in here. I'm waiting for my Typhoon H.